We're hoping it works, and we're live. Hi. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Mathematical. I'm Lynette Linda, the author of Mathematical, and here is Graham, the editor and producer of Mathematical. So I actually, just quickly, I had a comment today sent to me. Please forgive me, I've forgotten your name. But it was somebody who commented about the excellent music. Oh, in the book? Yes. Oh, great. So, yeah. Well, it wasn't me. I didn't make the music. No, well, I didn't record it. <laughs> I just found the music. We exactly. used a, a great website. Um, it, ironically, it was called Epidemic Sound. Um, Ep epidemic? epidemic sound? Is epidemic like a like a pandemic? Is that kind of closely related? Yeah. Yeah. Weird, but this was before it all happened. Yeah. 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 It was. Anyways, it was. that's yeah. where I got the music from. So it took a long time to kind of comb through it all, but. Yeah. Definitely. So yes. So I've had a lot of people commenting about how relaxing the meditations are and. Awesome. A lot of people are taking us for walks. Oh, we're listening to the book on yeah. a walk? Oh, cool. Yeah. Good stuff. That's also possible because of the way Graham had it loaded. So once again, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. So today we are talking about traps. Uh, such a big one. Okay. And before we get started, I'd really like to point out that at the root of all traps is essentially fear, mm. misinformation, and the biggest trap itself really is the monkey mind or the egoic state of mind is what I would like to say before we dive into some of this stuff. So do you want to sure. start out with the... Yeah. So I have a bunch of questions from you guys as well. Um, if you're new to Reflections on the Journey, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. That mm. helps YouTube just put this in front of more people. So if they find value, if you find value from this, most likely other people will find value from this too. So help us out with a subscribe and a like. Um, Thank you. But I got lots of questions here and we got lots of people from all over the world joining us as we normally do. I've seen Bill is here as well. I've seen Christine Davies. Um, got some people from Australia. Irene is here. Uh, we got Laura Roscoe. We got um, Hi, Robin. We got Kathy, Melinda, lots of people. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. And um, let's jump into traps here. So Lynette, traps are a big part of the mathematical game. Oh, yeah. Traps are kind of like, I, I, well, you know yourself referring to life itself. The traps are essentially really what I would rather call opportunities. Opportunities to overcome, opportunities to master energy and emotion, which is why we're here. So traps come to us in various ways and forms, in fact, in just about every way and form possible, mm -hmm. to give us an opportunity to remember who we are, to overcome it. And this is why I made the comment I did about fear, because fear is really the biggest trap. It just disguises itself in every way you can imagine. So sort of, I, I think it might be helpful to see a trap or fear like Halloween costumes, you just never know what someone's going to show up with, right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's like, yeah, it, any, you know, someone does it this way, someone does it that way, you know, and our fear will tailor make itself for our story and our own subjective reality, our own personality. So what might trigger one person might not trigger another person. Mm. The less fear that we live with, the more control we have over our experience essentially means the more of those opportunities that we accepted, that we embraced, that we integrated. Mm. Does that make uh, sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. So it's like, people's fears will show themselves in different ways depending on how that lesson needs to present itself. Oh yeah, and so tailor-made. Please mm -hmm. remember the universe is infinitely wise and infinitely brilliant, okay? And it will, of course, alter course on a dime. Mm. It, it's always correcting course. Mm -hmm. So please, you know, you're never gonna miss a lesson. You're never gonna miss an opportunity providing you teach yourself how to stay present in this moment now. And I think understanding that most of the traps that we face really, I, I, I would say at the root of it, are all fear. Understanding fear is an essential piece. That it's our friend, actually. Mm. You know, it's kind of like, you know, one of those friends that maybe might not be a friend anymore or frenemy, maybe, and you learn something really, really valuable from them. You may not want to hang out with them anymore, but you got to say, wow, thanks, man. Like, you really mm -hmm. taught me something valuable mm -hmm. and I will never be the same person again. I'm a little smarter. I'm a little wiser. I'm a little faster because of that fear, because of that opportunity. Okay. Why are traps essential to becoming a master of the mathematical game? Why do we need them? Well, they give us the opportunity to practice. 
to practice our tools, to practice awareness of who and what we are. It's not something that happens overnight. One of my tips and tools is you can't climb a ladder from the top rung first. So begin at the beginning. So our, our traps will be exactly right size. Whatever we need right now in this moment. We're never given anything that we can't handle. That's another thing to remember about the traps, which are our opportunities. And they are essentially the gateway to mastery. You overcome the trap, a.k.a. the opportunity or the fear. Mm. You overcome that and you gain another doorway. You gain another gateway. It's really kind of helpful to look at it like a video game, too. Like different you know? levels in the video game? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right? So on what, like, I haven't played a video game in my whole life, so maybe you can help me here. Not you ever played Super one. Mario? Oh, no. Didn't sorry. your son have Super Mario? He tried. He tried. <laughs> He did. He tried. He tried to get me to play video games and I just never got there. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought so, you said he tried, like he couldn't play either. No, no, no. no. He, so no. he can play. But no, unfortunately I had to, I had to time out on the video okay, games. Okay. Okay. But yeah, video games have levels and they get com yes, more complex and, yes. and harder and harder. Yes, exactly. So like at one level, you're facing a demon that looks like this when you're a beginner and you're just kind of toddling through the game. And then when you get to the upper levels, it's like now you're running and you're carrying bigger tools, which could be considered weapons perhaps in a video game and in traps for humanity in traps in the mathematical game the weapons really become tools to master those yes. challenges okay yes. okay yes and so we need these traps these things now also we should just clearly just roll rewind here traps what is a trap in the opening of the chapter you say that traps can also be reoccurring patterns in your life Oh, yes. Traps, if not mastered, will reoccur yes. and they'll get bigger and louder. It's kind of like if we ignore, and this is why we really want to avoid deny, deflect, distort, distraction, especially through addiction, because we will not see these opportunities, traps, as they're coming up. Yeah. So the universe takes that to mean that, oh, they can't hear me. Oh, they're <laughs> not the listening. <laughs> Turn up the volume. And believe me, Trust me, I have learned this the hard way. One man's toothpick is another man's two by four. The universe will course correct and turn up the volume and it'll get as loud as it needs to until we listen. So if we are experiencing what I call a trap uh, to the point where it's debilitating us or it's causing collapse in our life, then that's essentially telling us that there's something that we haven't seen for a long time, we haven't paid attention to, we've chosen to ignore, mm. okay? And this is why tools like meditation, journaling, and love listing are so, so helpful to keep us focused in recognizing what's a trap, what's an opportunity, and how to overcome it. It's when we don't take responsibility for our experience, largely through ignoring our feelings, mm -hmm. okay? This is the scoreboard in Mathematical. When we don't listen to our feelings, those traps have the opportunity to get louder and louder because our feelings, the guidance system, is how spirit, how divine works through us to show us, oh, there's a trap here. You can feel it like a knot in your gut closing of your heart, mm -hmm. the different ways that these will manifest, okay? And we are by no means going to be able to cover all of them today because there's so many. There's yeah, that's, so many. That's why you got to listen to the book. Yeah, <laughs> We're just definitely. doing a review and yeah. answering a little further questions on it. But um, so in these levels of these com more complex sort of, like you said, like a video game, the traps get more and more challenging or more and more subtle or yes, refined. Yes, as the master becomes a greater and greater master. Yes the tools become more and more challenging okay. to, to match your level of mastery. So for example, I would have to say, um, using myself as an example, I experience dealing with fears and challenges on a day-to-day -day basis that would probably collapse the general collective because they haven't had the opportunity to increase the tools, to strengthen themselves, to overcome these challenges. Once we reach a place in life where we're really living at, it is what it is. We've overcome most of the traps mm. and we're able to be at peace with whatever opportunity, trap, challenge, fear mm -hmm. comes our way. Mm -hmm. And we start to recognize more and more through the effective use. So another thing with traps, please remember divine grace. There's another tip and a tool for the love list. Divine grace never takes us anywhere that it cannot guide us and protect us. And one of the traps there that we can fall into is not knowing this and not listening. We are never alone. We are watched over and loved every minute of every single day beyond most of our ability to even comprehend the grace and the guidance that I experience in sessions with my clients and with myself and just in day-to-day -day life. We're never alone. 
So don't fall into the trap of thinking that you're dealing with these traps alone. You're not, never. Ask for the guidance. Ask grace to guide you and learn to be still and listen and you will get everything you need. I promise. I promise. Awesome. And that kind of goes into my second question here about if you are in a trap, what, how do you, what's your first step? Is that meditation? Is it becoming present? How do you get to that sense of like, oh, I'm stuck in a trap? Well, it, depending on how the trap comes up, the more present we're able to be on a regular basis in life, the more present we can be in the moment, the more easily we'll spot the trap. Okay. okay, because bear in mind, some of these new ones are coming in ways that we've never seen before. Some are familiar and we've been ignoring them and some of them are brand new. It's like seeing someone's variation of uh, a vampire costume. It's like, oh, I've never seen that before. Mm. So be ready for that too. We may not recognize them. So again, being tuned into the body, being present and having self-awareness, starting to get to know ourselves. The journaling process is very effective for this, getting to know ourselves um, and what our challenges are. Where do you feel contracted states? Where do you experience cycles of challenges or constant you know, blockages in your life? These are the areas that you might want to start to look. So when something comes up, you may be aware that there's a situation that you're stepping into where that could potentially come and you'll see that one coming. Being present is always helpful for this. The ones that we don't recognize being present helps us to spot them sooner. So presence in the body, taking a breath, tuning in energetically back to the scoreboard, listening to our feelings, mm. because our feelings come from beyond space and time. Our feelings are actually guiding us before the problem even comes. For many people who've had sessions with me, they will experience um, the desire to ask a question and I can give them the answer to the question before they ask it. And why? Because that exists outside of space and time, which is where the guidance system is. It's outside of space and time. So it can actually prepare you and guide you before the challenge actually physically presents itself in your story. Mm. tuning in you can have tuning in yeah intuitive guidance dreams oh there's just so many ways i mean we have such a limited capacity here to to share this on the show today so again i will mention that i will be doing another show called the penthouse perspective and i will go into much greater depth in all of these questions and the ones that are being sent in that we're not answering or able to answer i will be bringing them back up again i'm keeping record so the the traps again uh, learning to be present, recognizing they can come in any and every form, and teaching ourselves as a, as a as a mindset in advance to recognize that it's not bad or wrong when the challenges come. Mm -hmm. That'll make them easier to spot and make mm -hmm. them easier to overcome because what you resist persists. <laughs> easier said than done sometimes. Oh, yes. We did say this is the path to mastery. This is not clown school. Okay. This is literally the path to absolute mastery over the physical reality, the 3D reality we live in. So staying present in the body, paying attention to where tension rises up. Mm -hmm. How many of us will feel like a knot in your stomach? You ever had that? Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. get a knot in your stomach and you go, oh, and you get that, oh, that doom and gloom feeling. How many of you at that point go, oh no, something's wrong. I've done something wrong. Something's bad. Oh no, it's a bad omen. These are all incorrect perspectives. The correct perspective to spot a trap at this point would be more along the lines of, oh, stay neutral. My guidance system is telling me something. I'm on alert. Mm. Now let's de 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 pay attention. What's out there? <laughs> is that your radar? <laughs> Little scanner. It is actually. I do. I scan Wait, my you body. You do that internally. You go de de de. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I. He is laughing at me. I didn't know you did that. <laughs> I do. And I will scan up and down. I will scan uh, my environment. I will scan do you make up the noise and down. Though? Do you make the noise when you do it? No, but I'm going to start to <laughs> now whenever I'm around him. Uh, but it is my way of checking whether yeah, I, because I am an adept empath and I feel the emotions and the feelings of other people and, and other uh, energy systems around me. I want to be sure too, whether it's mine or it's someone else's. And recognizing that when the gut is giving us that foreboding, warning feeling, it's guiding us. It's not trying to tell us we're bad or wrong. There's another trap. We are not bad or wrong. We can't be bad or wrong, good or bad or right or wrong. We're either correct and in alignment or incorrect and out of alignment. If we're really far out of alignment, I'm going to do it with this hand. If we're really far out of alignment, we're going to feel all sorts of shades of awful. If we're really close to alignment, we're going to feel really good. The longer we stay in alignment, the longer we feel good. The longer we stay out of alignment, 
Mm -hmm. indicates a cycle, a fear that's cycling itself. Have I answered your This question? is great, yeah. And, and so effectively, the first step to recognizing you're in a trap is to be tuning into your scoreboard, which is a chapter of Mathematical. It's all about tuning feelings. into your feeling system. Yes, and yeah. don't automatically assume, like so many of us do because of our subjective programming, do not assume that that yucky feeling, that foreboding feeling is telling you that you've done something wrong or bad. Now, for any of us that are tuned in, our conscience will speak to us, but our conscience will never shame or guilt or blame. That belongs to the ego perspective. So if the feelings that rise up when you feel a trap or a challenge or an opportunity for growth to come your way, if the feeling that rises up is one of shame, guilt, or blame for yourself or another, you're not going down the correct path. That's going to lead to more misery. Mm. We want to recognize that it is just what it is, and it's a guidance system, and it's our intuitive body telling us not to continue to think that thought, not to continue on this path, or at the very least, it's a cause to pause, stop, look, listen, dee, 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 scan, okay? <laughs> Check for yourself. What's that feeling? Take a moment. Go to the washroom. Take a break. Take a moment and go, okay, where is this coming from? Because if you take that moment, and I'm sure you've experienced this yourself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you take that moment, you'll find that everything you need to know will come to meet you. Remember that tip in the tool? The master stays at home and waits for no one. It comes to you. So let it come to you. Mm -hmm. And if you can be still in the moment of <gasps> those feelings rising up, there again is mastery. It'll take some practice. Mm -hmm. Then you will be amazed at what you can learn in that moment. And you might also be really amazed to find out how much of the negativity that we pick up isn't even ours. I mean, we've picked it up somewhere else. Yeah, because uh -huh. feelings are like thoughts, okay? There's, it's just random stuff floating through the ethers and we can pick up random thoughts of other people. I can be highly telepathic, especially mm. with people that I've formed a bond with and I will pick up their thoughts. I will pick up their feelings and I've become able now to discern where they are theirs and where they're mine. And then that lets me know whether it's something I need to take responsibility for and make change or whether perhaps it's something I need to let go of if it regard if it's regarding someone else or if it's maybe offering me an opportunity to be of service and support because I can feel that person's fear coming up. I can remain in balance hopefully practicing the tools and hold space for the other person so that they may not need to fall so deeply into fear. How about on the other side, some, you know, you're talking about feeling feelings and, and, you know, staying present with them. How about on the other side where people are feeling feelings, but they're suppressing them, you know, they're, they don't want to feel them at all. Oh, so that's yeah. really well, important as well that, you know, that's also a trap, you know, we can't, oh, we can't yes. get stuck in that. <laughs> no. And the longer we suppress, the longer we suppress, the more we cycle. Okay. And once we've reached a point where there's physical maladies in the body, it tells you that we've suppressed it for a long time by the time it manifests at the physical level. Mm. So essentially our, our opportunities, our traps come through energetically first. And it's the universe turning up the volume if it becomes a physical or if it becomes a repeat cycle. Right. Okay. We're not designed to be optimally functioning if we're out of balance. That is always going to lead to deterioration, mental, physical, emotional. Mm. We are designed optimally to be in balance, which will always lead to greater expansions, joy, win-win, unity every time. Yeah. It's, it's really quite black and white, actually, when you come to understand it. There's a big uh, section here in this chapter uh, on false beliefs being a, a very big, important part to understand about traps. Mm -hmm. So when some, <laughs> how, do you, how does someone discern a false belief from a true belief? Well, a false belief is essentially one that will lead to misalignment. You'll be out of balance. It will not lead you to freedom, unity. It will not release the fear. Okay? And a false belief is based on a false thought. So I would say poison seed, poison fruit. Uh, a true belief or a correct belief is one that will lead to freedom. Mm. It is one that will lead to unity. It's one that will lead to relief. So you can tell pretty quickly just by thinking a thought. Like how it feels. How it feels. Okay. And, and this is one of the tools that I share with people. Ask yourself, how do I feel when I think the thought, um, I'm going to go to dinner with this person? And you get, oh, a terrible feeling that rises up. Okay, breathe that out. Let it go. Then ask the question that says, how do I feel when I think the thought, I'm not going to go out for dinner with this person? And you feel relief. Ah, now there's your opportunity. 
to either follow what feels good and brings relief or to do the opposite. And this is where another trap mm. comes in that can look like, do I feel obligated? Am I people pleasing? Am I over functioning? Mm -hmm. Am I mm -hmm. going to go and do this thing that my intuition is trying to tell me is not good for me, but I'm going to go and do it because I want to please someone else. How about though, if there's a circumstance that you're, you're, you're feeling you're like, for instance, they go to dinner, go to dinner with somebody and you're like, you don't get a good feeling about it, but it's because it's uncomfortable that you have to go and, you know, tell them oh, something that you've been this, avoiding or, you know what I'm saying? This leads to somebody's question here. Um, I think it was Irene. Uh, let me just jump through here. This is Irene's question. Yes. She has a, about an irrational fear. Can you? Yes, please. Okay. So this is Irene's question. We're going to jump Irene. ahead here. Irene says, I feel like I have an irrational fear inside me. I have had many times a chance to step up in my career, but some something always holds me back. I feel scared to take the next step and get out of my comfort zone. How do I overcome this fear? I want to move forward, but I can't. I don't feel ready to do this yet. Okay, so let's remember false evaluation about reality, false evidence appearing real. And let's remember we will not overcome traps or grow inside our comfort zone. Okay, we plant a seed in a tiny little space. And if that seed is going to grow, it's going to have to exceed that space. And that's where we typically trigger the fears because we're going outside of our comfort zone. So I suggest you don't fall into the trap that says, I'm going to be able to grow and expand inside my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is something I experience a lot. For those that have been born with the calling that I've been born with, fear isn't something we experience quite the same way. Okay. In fact, this is something I've been known for all my life. I live outside of most people's comfort zones. And I wouldn't say that it's because I'm more brave or courageous. I would say it's because I have a greater understanding than some people do about what it means to be outside of your comfort zone. So I really like to go outside of my comfort zone because it shows me that that's where I'm going to grow. Mm. So I embrace that. I recognize that I'm growing outside of my comfort zone. I'm seeing something on our lens there. Is it doing something funny? Uh, over your face? Yeah. Oh, that's just a uh, autofocus tracking. It's oh. just saying like, hey, we're focused on Lynette's face. Oh, she's moving. <laughs> oh, I'm learning something yeah. every day. I'm not a techie. I'm definitely not a techie. You can thank the technology to Graham because it ain't me. I just sit and do as I'm told. So just to so. rewind here. Um, so in terms of tuning into your feelings, you, yeah. you know, if you have a good feeling about going out to dinner with somebody versus, you know, feeling yes. really heavy. Yes. And challenge the heavy is the heavy feeling because, you know, you're afraid to go out and meet this person and get outside of your comfort zone. Right. And if you take a moment when this cause to pause, this trap, this opportunity, this challenge, whatever you want to call it, rises up, you'll find out pretty quickly if you tune in with integrity and actually listen to your feelings. They'll tell you right away. It's like, oh, well, you know, I'm afraid that this person isn't going to like me or I'm afraid that uh, the conversation is going to go somewhere I don't want it to go. Mm -hmm. And of course, our ego is not going to want us to do that. Our ego wants to stay where it's nice and safe. So many of us think, for example, Irene, you might say that you're sabotaging yourself by not moving forward. That isn't true. The ego doesn't sabotage us. That's a really a very negative way to look at it. What the ego does is it essentially alerts us through triggering fear that we're about to leave that comfort zone. And when we can normalize that and say, oh, I'm about to grow. Fear is normal. <laughs> it's just a feeling. I can't die from feeling my feelings. Maybe I need to breathe. Maybe I need to practice a few of my tools because the fear is really, really strong in this particular subject. It's normal. Also recognize the louder the fear, the bigger the trap, the bigger the payback. Okay. So if you have a trigger, uh, I'm sorry, blah, 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 I think I was trying to say two words at once. If you're experiencing a trap or a fear that's really holding you back and has been holding you back for a long time, or it's really holding you back from something, you know, deep down, you really, really want, if you're being honest with yourself and not listening to your ego and let it sabotage you, then your ego jumps up to say, warning, warning, we're about to leave our comfort zone and it will do this when we're moving towards things we really love. It will do this when we're moving outside of our comfort zone, which is where we grow, which is where we master the traps. So let's normalize that. Fear is normal. It's natural. You cannot die from feeling your feelings, but please remember, like attracts like. So if you're following a mindset, an idea, a belief, a false belief, that is one that is going to separate you from what you really want, it's going to feel yucky. 
Mm-hmm. You're not going to move forward. Just pay attention. You won't have to go very far to see which direction it's going. It's pretty much left or right. So once we recognize a trap or a fear, we want to essentially activate the opposite, which is, I understand that I'm feeling fear. That's okay. Validate it. Don't resist it. I understand that I'm feeling fear and start to talk to yourself. This means I'm approaching the exit of my comfort zone and this is normal. It's okay. And watch the fear quiet itself. It's much like calming a two-year-old and letting the two-year-old know that everything's going to be okay, but that they're going to have to take their medicine anyway, and they're going to have to go to bed anyway, and it's okay. It's all okay. So again, those are tools for practicing self-love and comforting ourselves. Mm -hmm. So irrational fear will lead us away from our desires. Rational fear, I'm tongue-tied today, rational fear will guide us towards our desires and protect us. Irrational fear is essentially a monkey town renting free space in your head. Okay. When you say monkey town, explain for people what monkey, monkey town. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. When you're spinning and, 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 and everything's going awful and you're awfulizing and mm-hmm. everything's crashing and everything's bad and and you're having a bad hair day and you don't have any hair and and you know you just everything's going to spiral downwards. So try to hit the brakes and remind yourself, fear is guiding me. This tightness that I'm feeling, it's okay. And start to breathe through it. One of the tools that I encourage here is I call, I call this, I'm thinking of one of my clients, Heidi. (laughs) Bah. Okay. I've called Heidi a couple of times for sessions and I'll say, how you doing? And she'll sit there and she'll say, bah, bah. And what it stands for is breathe, accept, Allow and ask for help. So just start breathing. Stay present in your body as that feeling rises up and you will not master this the first time. Don't set that expectation. It's completely unrealistic, but you will want to practice. So breathe. Mm. Accept the feeling that's rising up. Accept the challenge that's in front of you, remembering that that's what we're here to do, to master this. So breathe, accept, allow the situation to happen as it's happening, unless, of course, it's an emergency or it's completely unacceptable, in which case you may need to take immediate action. I'm talking more about the stuff that's happening in your head, okay? And then ask for help, ask for guidance. And I want to reiterate what I said at the beginning of the show. We are surrounded by guidance. I am never alone. In fact, I can't tell you how many times I'm literally physically alone and I feel like I'm in a crowded room or I'm in the forest all by myself or on the edge of the ocean and I can feel a crowd of guides and support around me to the point where overcoming fear for me, facing challenges and fear has become quite simple and so much easier than it ever was. The fears that I'm dealing with now are the deep, deep, deep ones, but... That's okay. I got it. I got this far. I'm going to keep on going. I recommend you do too. We we touched a little bit on irrational versus rational fear. Mm-hmm. Um, just so we're, this is a very important part in mm-hmm. Mathemagical Definitely. and for people to understand that there is a distinct difference. And so could you explain for people how they can really take that litmus test and be like, ah, this is irrational. <clears throat> okay. So irrational, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to be one that isn't true if you challenge it with common sense. Okay. It's also common for us to have irrational fears that lead to panic attacks and anxiety because we're living in the future. Okay. What if this, and what if that, and oh my gosh, and what if, and what if I call this awfulizing and it's like, wait a minute, slow it down. Be in this moment right now. Okay. For an irrational fear to survive, for it to live longer, it needs you to buy into it. It -hmm. needs you to agree to it. And it needs you to participate in telling the story that isn't actually real yet. A rational fear is going to be something like I'm standing on the edge of a cliff and I've got a herd of buffalo coming at me. If I move away from the cliff, okay, the the rational fear, the rational fear will dissipate. Irrational fear is not going to dissipate until you change your thinking, until you change your focus. An irrational fear can be the kind that paralyzes us laying in bed at night. Mm, okay. Awfulizing about something coming in the future. It's like, what if this? What if that? What if this? No, 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 no. Be here now. Be in this moment right now. Mm. The future is always in the future. When it does get here, it's now. The past is always in the past and you can't go back. 
Everything that we need to actually do happens in this moment right now. And this is where I want to remind you, it's those irrational fears that perpetuate the story of the life that you don't want to be living. Because while you're laying in bed at night, letting those irrational fears churn in your head, you're actually creating your reality because like attracts like. Because you're focusing on it. Because you're focusing on it. Mm -hmm. And the universe is essentially, please remember this, the universe doesn't care what you fear. It just notes that you're in fear. And the universe recognizes that we have free will. So the universe says, oh, okay, uh, Lynette is focusing on fear. She wants more fear. She must want the experience of fear. We're going to mm. bring her more fear. Mm. As opposed to Lynette is challenging these irrational fears. She doesn't want any more of them. So I have to say, honestly, for myself, especially in contrast to when I was a much younger woman, I don't live in the irrational fear state very often at all. I don't want to say never because we never arrive. That's another trap. Okay. <laughs> Perfection doesn't exist, not in the physical reality. We never arrive. We'll be constantly mastering. It just gets easier and easier and simpler and simpler. The more we overcome the irrational fears, the more of the traps we master, the easier life gets, the more abundant we are, the more of the dreams we get to live. So if you're seeing somebody living their dreams, let's take you and I, for example, mm -hmm. we are both living our dream. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have mastered our fears to get here. Okay. And this is why I encourage you to be honored by the company you keep. Are you surrounded by people that are going to feed your fear? Or are you surrounded by people who are going to say, you got this, you can do this, walk right into it. You'll find that fear is like an apparition. When you develop the mindset that says you're not real, unless I give you life and decide that you're real, it, it vanishes, literally. It vanishes because it needs your attention. You are the creator. It needs your attention to survive and thrive. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a fear that's debilitating you, You've been feeding it. Stop feeding it. Start telling the opposite story step by step and write it down in ink and you'll watch it change. Okay. I want to give away a copy of the book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to give okay. away too. Um, and and we'll questions. get to, well, yeah, just because Emma Judge <laughs> says anxiety is a daily struggle for her. And I'm thinking anxiety is fairly, fairly <clears throat> similar to what we're talking about right now, is it not? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. Anxiety is essentially fear on overdrive. Okay, we got our hat full anxiety, of names. Anxiety, <clears throat> goodness me, anxiety can act like a nebulous. It's just like this, this sort of, hmm, I don't really know what's bad or wrong, but I'm anxious and I'm afraid. And, and in that moment, you could sort of say, in a, in a very kind of general way, we've bought into a ghost, okay? Because anxiety is telling us that we're living in the future. We're not present in our body now mm. because everything we need to overcome the fear in the moment is present in the moment. It's when we go into the future, we start awfulizing, we let the monkey mind run loose. Mm -hmm. That's when we start to go into anxiety. Also, when we become more attuned energetically, we can be picking up other people's anxiety. So I've just come from the big smoke. I was in the big city. And while I was there, I was experiencing quite a bit of anxiety. When I came back here, the anxiety dissipated. Now, sadly, I have to get back on the boat and go back to the big smoke tonight. And I know that I'm going to feel a little bit more of that anxiety because I'm an adept empath and I feel the collective. However, I don't let it rule me. And I practice breathing, music, these kinds of tools to overcome it. Okay, so anxiety can be paralyzing. And it is something I do want to talk a lot more about on the penthouse perspective. And in fact, I probably do a couple of shows just on that. And the penthouse will be long. on this channel. So if yes. you subscribe, you'll be able to yes. get updates for the penthouse when it comes yes. out. Yes, I'll also send all the updates to the mathematical um, email list. Email list, yes. right? Okay, so we have here. Can you read it? Margaret. No, I can't. Margaret Lannon. So Margaret. You have won a copy of Mathematical, and Sally will send you your free copy. So if you're interested in winning a free copy of Mathematical, you can go to mathematical.com. And at the bottom of the website, there, she's going to give out another one. <laughs> there's, there's an entry form. If you want to win a copy of Mathematical, you can put your name and your email address there. And if you have questions, put questions, all that stuff. Yeah, and we are keeping track of everything, please. Nothing has gone unread or unmissed. We've just got a lot on our plates. This is awesome. So Ashley, Ashley Salt, you just won. And I just saw Ashley's comment on YouTube here. She says, bringing tears to my eyes, Lynette. 
So I'm assuming oh, what you've just said has really touched her. Yes. Well, you've just won a copy of the book as well, Ashley. So congratulations. You know, and Ashley, I want to make another suggestion about the anxiety, okay? Self-talk. Talk to yourself. I'm okay. I'm going to be fine. I can do this. Okay? You really can. All of us can. Doesn't hurt to get a teddy bear, someone that you can cuddle. I also want to encourage music. Okay, and I actually have a song that I've been sharing with a number of people lately, and I would like to share it with people to play um, this one here. It's called Oh Yeah Yeah In Dreams, and it's by a woman named Jai Jagdish. Do you want to spell that? Yeah, so what we can do actually is we can put this out on like a Spotify playlist or something for people. Oh, can we? Yeah. No, um, we can't. And then... <laughs> And that, well, that's what I've done with uh, with some of the music that I listen to is I just share it with people in a Spotify playlist. Most people have Spotify. And if you don't have Spotify, there's free accounts that you can uh, listen. Yeah, so, I have sent it to some people, but how do I yeah. send it to the general? Uh, I guess you could put it to Sally and Sally could send it out through the email list um, or just, you know, write the names down too. That's always possible. Okay. So Jai Jagdish and it's called In Dreams and you definitely will find it on Spotify. Also, there's an album called... Um, what is it? Uh, I've listened to it for years. Um, is it the Ancient Voices album? From the Call of the Mystic, yes. Mm -hmm. And there's a song called Ancient Voices. Sometimes for myself, when I'm experiencing overwhelming emotion, um, really big challenges, then some of them for me are not even physical. I'm transmuting for the collective. So I have stuff coming in that I'm not going to be able to understand. I need to just feel and release without judgment. I will play those two songs over and over for myself amongst others and just stay in that state and try to stay peaceful. And if we do this, what will actually happen is that the frequency of this beautiful and peaceful music, and I've had feedback from many people that I've shared this with, this beautiful and peaceful music is a higher frequency than fear, and it will trump it, okay? So it means that it cancels out the lower vibratory fears. Mm. So just keep listening to it. And this is why, are you honored by the company you keep, what you eat and where you sleep? And when I say what you eat, I also mean what you feed your mind. Mm -hmm. what you're listening to, where your focus is, okay? So when I'm experiencing things that I do not have a logical understanding of, but I don't want to continue to feel the feeling, I will play the music. It will help me to lift the feeling. And from that higher perspective, I have a greater, greater opportunity to overcome the challenge, okay? So is there any, do we want to maybe have a look at? Oh, well, everybody's CD. congratulating Ashley, I got it. So. <laughs> you guys so rock. Um, so supportive. I got to say thank you to so many people out there that are so supportive. I really, really appreciate your messages very much. You know, we are all in this together. We really, really are all in this together. There really is only one of us here. That is my perspective. Rami Moody says, how can we get on the email list? So that's on mathematical.com. Oh, Rami, I'm so sorry. I thought you were on the email list. I apologize. I know, Rami. Okay. Oh, okay. So I will, mm, sorry. If you I'll go to mathematical.com and you uh, write a question or any of those, if you send an email to the website there, those emails will all be included in um, in updates and yes. things like that. So yes. um, what else do we have here? Um, June says, I need to talk to myself in a positive way. I always speak to myself negatively and I always beat myself up for every mistake. Okay. First thing, I used to do that. I don't do that anymore. Okay. I recommend being your own best friend. Many of us, in fact, most of us at this current time on earth grew up with negative messages in our childhoods, which were perpetuated by the negative messages that the teachers and parents around us were giving them themselves. And it's like a virus and it continues to cycle through. So the fact that you've spotted the negative talk, that's 50% of the battle right there. Now, just start to activate the polar opposite. And it can feel really counterintuitive because starting to love ourselves after not loving ourselves and living in the fear zone for a long time can feel counterintuitive and it can feel awkward and phony. And you know what? I got to tell you, it works. Mm -hmm. It works. I have spent a great deal of my life facing these challenges on my own with spirit. And it is not unheard of for me to go look in the mirror and look myself in the eye and say, girl, you got this. You can overcome this and you will overcome this. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to do this because I didn't have a lot of support around me. 
And you know what? At the end of the day, you're the only one you got, babe. You're the only one you really got. So be your own best friend. Sing your praises. Sing about it. Talk about it. Appreciate everything that you've got going for you. Again, the universe doesn't care what you fear. It just notices that you fear and brings you more fear. Mm -hmm. The universe doesn't care what you appreciate. It just notices that you appreciate and brings you more to appreciate. Okay? So you can't climb a ladder from the top rung first. Begin at the beginning. Baby steps. Take stock of all the things that you've got to be grateful for. Take stock of everything about your body, your health, what you've got going for you, and continue to talk in this way, surrounding yourself with positive people and music, and you'll be surprised at how quickly your situation will transmute. Okay? Essentially, we start to practice loving self-talk. We're now moving in the direction that gives us ease and flow. Another tip and a tool. When in line with divine, everything goes with an ease and a flow. And if we can see the divine universe as the perfect mother and father, the most absolutely unconditionally loving mother and father, how would they want us to talk to ourselves? How would they want us to treat each other? Mm. This is what we want to do. And for many of us who've been given so much negative self-talk, I, I started doing work many, many years ago, decades ago now, oh, I'm aging myself, in women's shelters. And I would be, for example, I can think of one woman sitting there with a black eye and a broken arm, a broken collarbone, and she'd been beaten by the same person for the umpteenth time. And I said to her, I said, what would you do if this person who beat you did this to your child? And immediately she went from a victim state to a warrior state. And I said, then why are you allowing it to happen to you? If you wouldn't talk to your friends that way, if you wouldn't talk to your loved ones and your children that way, then please, please don't talk to yourself that way. You are a divine child of the universe. You are love itself. Move into alignment with that and set yourself free. Okay. I want to give away another book. Another one. Rosemary Pina. Rosemary Pina. Congratulations. Sally will be sending you a free copy of Mathematical. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you. And if you are having positive experiences from the book and you're seeing people around you that may benefit from it, I encourage you to share or share pieces of it, please. We just don't know when someone around us may benefit. Nobody's in your life by accident. Everything happens for a reason. We're all in this together. So let's share our tips and tools and help each other unite and rise. Okay. Awesome. Um, so I have a question here. Um, we, I'm trying to get through as much as we have here. I have questions from people that have written in and I have one more question of my own. Um, and this is just about towards the end of the chapter of traps. You talk about uh, one of the traps being thinking that you have to deserve or earn something. False belief. False belief. So can you explain the can you can you elaborate? Because I'm in my mind, when I first heard you say this, I was like, well, you know, mm -hmm. if I go work eight hours a day, I've earned my money. I deserve the money that in I've earned. In that sense, worked. yes, you've earned. Okay. So in that sense, yes. Okay. I'm talking about deserving and earning as a false belief system in terms of what we're allowed to have in life and what we aren't. Mm. Many of us are in lack mentality, which goes with needy mentality, victim mentality that says, well, so and so can have it, but I can't. And it is wow. often typically attached to a false belief or a mind virus that was planted inside of us when we were children. So say, for oh, example, um, your parents grew up with lack mentality. They're going to infect you with it. And they're going to tell you that you can't have anything unless you slave away and work so hard, and then you can have it. When we come to higher states of awareness and consciousness about who and what we really are, we start to see that when in line with divine, everything goes with an ease and a flow, and that it's not about deserving and earning. It's about knowing who you are and aligning. Mm. Key, please. It's about knowing who you are and acting upon that and therefore aligning. It could be said like this. Jesus the Christ did one, a great master. He said, know thyself to thine own self be true and the truth will set you free. Now, when he said know thyself, he was actually referring to who you really are, not your subjective programming, not what society tells you, not what your parents often would have told you, our teachers, our guides. That's the story that we're meant to set ourselves free from. That's the one that's riddled with traps. Because the truth is, 
You can have whatever you want as long as it's possible in the 3D reality, providing you know how to align to get it. And gifts, abundance are at higher frequency states. They're not in the lower vibratory fearful states. And this is why subjective programming in the mainstream matrix, as I like to refer to it, matrix was not a movie. It was a documentary. I highly <laughs> recommend watching the matrix. It's my all time favorite movie. Uh, if we recognize that there are systems in place that do not want what is for the greater good of all. <clears throat> Excuse me. And because they do not want what is for the greater good of all, they do not want us to wake up and recognize that it's not about deserving and earning. They want to keep us in those lower belief systems. The truth is, we deserve whatever we want. It's like attracts like. There is no fair and unfair. There is a very black and white, like attracts like. You put your attention upon it, consciously or unconsciously, it becomes your reality. If you don't believe that you deserve it, then you won't get it. If you believe mm -hmm. that you deserve it, then you will see it start to come into your reality and take form. Will it also not ask you, though, to grow as a person? Like there is a level of... It is going to ask you to let go of any of the belief systems yeah. that held you back. It right. will. And these are the traps. It's going to ask you to let go. It's like, okay, you want to go to the higher levels of awareness, then you're going to have to let go of the belief systems that kept you stuck in the lower mm -hmm. levels of awareness. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a uh, greater height of mastery, greater state of awareness, higher, more conscious tools, more truth in our thoughts and beliefs. It's because I, I have seen out there, there is this sort of, um, you know, those books like the secret and stuff where you just sit back and you you feel grateful for something and you don't, there's nothing you have to do and it will just come to you. Well, no, not exactly. So, okay? yeah, I just and, wanted to and I, I really, draw a there, I have here. a few issues with the book, The Secret, to be honest, because it does give us false beliefs in many ways. First of all, it talks about the law of attraction and the law of abundance. And this is a subtle way for the ego to trick us. Like attracts like is far more accurate because they want us to believe that it's about material things. We don't recognize that in order to manifest those material things, we may need to change our psychology. In fact, most of the time we do need to change our psychology. We also want to recognize that if we're after material things and they are not for our greater good or for the greater good of all, you may manifest them, but you will not be able to keep them because if it's not for the greater mm. good of all, it's unsustainable. Mm. This is what people don't recognize. Another trap is when people believe that, um, you know, uh, it has to be something that benefits everybody. You're allowed to have joy yourself. You're allowed to experience joy and bliss yourself so long as it's not hurting anyone else. Okay. Does that make sense? I think so. Yeah. I just wanted to, yeah, I think, yeah. I just wanted to clarify that, you know, cause there are people that are like, I don't have to do anything. I just to sit on my yes. couch and be positive no. and then everything will show up in my life. <laughs> if, if that was possible, then you'd already have what you want. Yeah. So if you are not living in the current state that you wish to be living in, then I guarantee you, you've got false belief systems that need to be set free. You need to change these false belief systems. You need to cancel them out and replace them with correct belief systems, which will align you with your desires. I had another friend say to me the other day uh, that she cannot believe how fast I manifest. She said, I've never seen anybody manifest like you do. And it's not because I don't face challenges. It's because my core knowing, not my belief, my core knowing is that if it's in line with divine, I can have it. So I don't have those resistant states, those blocks so we could see it like you're moving towards what you desire and there will be resistant belief systems. I don't deserve, not me, not right now. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm not this. I'm not that, whatever. These belief systems have to be each one canceled out and it will present itself as a challenge in your story. These belief systems need to be canceled out before you can move into alignment with what was yours all along. Abundance is our birthright. However, if we pursue abundance for its material and material alone, you may find it a hollow victory or unsustainable. It's been my experience when we pursue a state of mind that is peaceful and harmonious, you'll find that all your gifts are kind of all waiting there for mm. you. And abundance is also a state of mind, is it not? 
It is. Abundance is a state of mind. Absolutely. Yeah. And everything you need will we'll just flow. It yeah. just, you don't even ask for it anymore. Again, when in line with divine, it will happen with an ease and a flow. The master stays at home and waits for no one. It comes to you. But in order for it to come to us, we must remove the belief systems that resist it from coming. Mm. False belief systems, irrational thoughts, irrational beliefs. Okay. You also just made a note here about um, comparing and competing and Joe jobs. Yes. Um, comparing and competing will always lead to suffering. If you think that you're going to get somewhere to achieve your highest game by comparing and competing with others, then that is a false belief system that's going to lead to misery. Mm. Okay. It would be like saying Picasso and Monet should compete about who's the best painter. All right. And you'll never hear Picasso or Monet or any great artist apologize for their individual unique work of art. Comparing and competing says we need to be like others. This is a false belief system. We're not here to be like others. The core of who and what we are is exactly the same. The truth of who and what we are is the same. How we express it, how we live it is our unique expression. We are our own unique work of art. If you're a happy and joyous person, you got yourself there, either in this lifetime or in others accumulated. It is. It's others accumulated. You may be experiencing arriving in this lifetime. This is how we recognize people that are just born happy. They mastered it in a previous embodiment. Some of us are mastering it now. Okay? Make sense? Yeah. So Pat has a great comment here. She says, I absolutely love Mathematical, the book. I have listened to it uh, many, many times, and oh, each time wonderful. I get something new from it. So thank Good. you so much. Good. Thank you, Pat. I'd, I'd like to point out, Pat, that um, I, I've, I've had many people share that kind of a comment with me. And I'd like to share that when information is channeled, as the book was channeled, okay? When information is channeled, it's coming from divine. It's coming from spirit. I'm, I'm just the messenger. And when we are experiencing information coming that way, we will experience learning much like a Nautilus. We grow up and out. So as we grow and expand, what's, what we heard initially expands as we expand. So you'll hear the same thing over and over again, but each time you'll catch something you didn't catch before. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted it to be audio so that we could go back and catch it again and again and keep expanding and keep expanding. I have friends that are very well aware of my material who've listened to the book upwards. I have one now nine times and he says he's still getting more information out of it. <laughs> so awesome. do keep going, even if it's just a support, anything and everything that causes you to feel better, not just mathematical, anything and everything. And you'll find that that material will all support itself and each other because the truth always loops back on itself right? Lies hit dead ends. The truth never stops expanding. Mm -hmm. Same I, as us. I like the word fractal. I don't know what a nautilus is. What's a nautilus? A nautilus is like a seashell and it, it'll go like oh, this oh, and yeah, it yeah, spirals yeah, yeah, up yeah, yeah. and okay, out. Okay. Okay. okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you guys have ever seen fractal patterns or stuff too, it's very similar. The way nature, like a tree grows or the capillaries in our lungs and stuff, like it's like this fractal yes. pattern. Um, and that's what I've always used when, when listening to Lynette's work is that it's like a fractal. You can zoom in on it. It's the yes. same pattern, but you zoom out and you're like, oh, it's even better. It's even more. You can get more from it. And, from and acting as the editor, actually, Graham was able to help me stay within a, a, a reasonable uh, <laughs> distance of fractal because you'll find somebody who is a, a live channel like I am. I can just go on and on and on and I can expand into the truth ad infinitum. It's like in Star Wars when you go into light speed and everything is going like so fast. That's what it's like. So you just got to go slow down, Lynette, slow down. <laughs> but this is actually something that I want people to recognize is our birthright. It belongs to all of us, this ability. So once we set ourselves free from key false belief systems, the ability to see this, the truth and watch it expand and expand and expand and expand becomes a natural part of the experience. Okay, because the truth unites and never stops expanding. Lies collapse and separate. Key information, overcoming traps, okay? Tammy uh, has asked uh, for me to put the uh, your playlist of music in the show notes of this video. That's a great idea, Tammy, thank yes. you. Um, yes, I can do that. Uh, so once Lynette creates that playlist, we'll just add the link in the show notes sure. below this video. And then you guys can check it out there. Um, we have a question here from Angel, it looks like. <clears throat> What if you fear 
What if your fear of being around other people because of past lifetime, how do you overcome that? Past lifetime? Well, do you understand that? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, I think I understand that. If what you're saying is that you believe you're afraid of being around people because of previous embodiments, that's not going to be entirely true. Okay. There's going to be a huge contribution made by this lifetime. I am able to remember previous embodiments. I have full cognizant memory of previous embodiments and things that happened that were very, very challenging. So we want to be really careful before we start to tell ourselves those stories. Please be very cautious because like does attract like. And if you believe that to be true, that will be your experience. You will find that whether it happened in a previous embodiment or this embodiment, your opportunity to overcome that trap is still in this moment now. Mm. Okay. It's still in this moment now. So beginning with dialogue that says things like, I am safe. I trust myself. I can discern whose company I want to be in and whose company is not good for me to be in by listening to your gut and with baby steps, comforting yourself and validating yourself for being able to protect yourself. Okay. We want to be careful. We don't go too far down those fearful rabbit holes. There's a lot of misinformation out there in the mainstream matrix right now, especially in the spiritual world. Okay. I'm, I'm gobsmacked some days at some of the stuff that's being said and the irresponsibility of the people that's passing this information on. One of my key foundations, the key actually foundation of my work is integrity. And if I do not know it to be true, which is I've experienced it and I'm aware that it's true, I will not share that information. So if you hear me say, I think, and I believe, it means it hasn't become a knowing for me. If I say, I know, then I know. Mm. Okay. So be very, very careful about the story that you're telling. And there's a lot of false belief systems out there around that now, especially because a lot of the mainstream people are just becoming aware of reincarnation. Okay. And that we do live many, many lifetimes. Again, your mastery is in this moment now, whether the challenge you're overcoming was in a previous embodiment or not. Me coming forward to be a live channel required that I overcame a number of challenges from previous embodiments. And I did that in the moment that they presented themselves in this embodiment as Lynette. Okay, I hope that answers your question. And Nancy has a question here. She says, uh, this is from the website. Uh, Nancy wrote, last time, uh, last night, I should say, I was dead asleep and then I heard a voice clear as day. All it said is, I am here. I have been dealing with fear, always afraid and not sure how to deal with it. How do you deal with it? And what do you think that voice meant? So we did touch on fear before. Okay. So I'm not really sure if the voice said, I am here. Yes. She said, all it said was, I am here. Ah, okay. And the feeling that came up with it was? Um... Oh, the, she, she had another question about how to, how to deal with fear because she's been experiencing that. Okay. Well, if I was in a dream state or I was in a semi-lucid state, but I do a lot of lucid dreaming. We are having a very active dream state right now. Many of us, especially those of us who are tuning in and not medicating ourselves. Um, I am here. If I was to hear that now, I'm speaking from my perspective, then that would be for me a message from one of my guides saying, I am here. You're being watched over. Mm. You're being guided. Now, one of the tools that I started practicing as a very young child was to state that only the light may enter. In fact, I remember being in Toronto with my grandmother as a young girl. And she said to me, I started doing this work when I was very young. We used to have these wonderful conversations up until the wee hours of the morning. And she said to me, where do you get your information from? And I remember out of nowhere, the answer came out of me while I made a fist and I was sitting in front of my grandmother on the floor with my legs crossed, uh, yoga style. And I, without any, you know, uh, preparation, I took my fist and I banged my fist on the floor and I said, only the light may enter. And when you state this with great intention, whether you fully recognize your true power and who and what you are or not, the universe is coded to obey. So if you state with great intention, only the light may enter, then that is exactly what will happen. Okay? Most of the fears that we experience come because we give them the gateway. Fear can only come through fear and lust. So mm. 
recognize who you are in baby steps, give yourself the benefit of the doubt and have some faith and state only the light may enter before every session, only the light may enter. When I was channeling the book, only the light may enter. If I'm working with anything like uh, tarot cards, anything of that nature, only the light may enter and the results will prove me correct. Mm. I hope that answers the question. Um, yes. Uh, well, Nancy, if you if you need more, please write a comment because I can see you here in the chat. So hopefully uh, you that was good. You got that. And if there was any more, please write a comment. Now, we'll, as she says, that's why I asked the question. Okay. So I hope that that worked good. for you. <laughs> Practice it and let us know how it goes, please. Uh, and I'm okay. going to say I told you so because I know it works. Penny says, "Wow, that gave me chills." Awesome. I call those tickle stars. <laughs> And that means you're aligned with truth. Have you ever experienced something so magical, so beautiful, and your body's just full of tickle stars? My son named them that when he was three years old. Some of us call it goosebumps. But when it comes like that, when you're hearing something beautiful, for me, that is always a sign of alignment. It means we're in line with truth. And it's actually an epiphany in some ways, too. So mm. tickle stars, wonderful sign. Okay. Carol says, how is it possible to remain authentic in a relationship through challenges without shutting down? I find myself shutting down when things get too intense rather than just putting up a boundary. Okay. Well, this is a common part of our development before we've created healthy boundaries for ourselves. I can't go into this one too deeply, oh, okay. um, but to feel overwhelmed is also going to lead to procrastination, not dealing with things and shutting down because we're overwhelmed. It's too much. So you can start to practice tools in advance. I highly, highly recommend meditation. I would, I, that would be my gift to the planet. If I could give a gift to the planet, it would be meditation. With meditation, you will find that you've created a gateway for guides, intuition, and support to start to be present with you in the moment of challenge and overwhelm in your case. If we do not, through free will. Remember, this physical experience we're having is free will. If we do not of our own free will choose to allow this guidance to come in, then it cannot. We're so deeply respected. Our guides, our eternal loving support, the angelic host, whatever you'd like to call it, is not allowed to break the divine law, which says free will. And this is why we have to develop the relationship with spirit and understand that it is our choice to let it in to guide us or not. And integrity will pave that way. Hmm. Truly listen to be whole. Remember who you really are. Support and love yourself first. Listen to the voice. If you're feeling overwhelmed, practice self-love. Take a step back. Take a breath. What it also can mean is that you want to prepare tools in advance. If you're going into a situation where you know you might be overwhelmed, you can prepare what I call pre-scripted responses. Okay. Sometimes we're going into a situation that's quite predictable. Pre-script for yourself and rehearse that comment. Even if it's one to say, I can't talk about this right now. I'm going to come back and talk about it as soon as I can, but I need to go right now. Or some such comment that allows you to both face the moment, but create a segue for peace and to give yourself a chance to step back and recoup. Okay. So pre-scripted responses, meditation, preparing tools in advance. So if you're feeling completely overwhelmed, it's also an indication that you've been doing it for a while. So start telling a different story. And this is where I encourage going into the love list and start telling the story that says, I can handle it. I am strong enough and watch. Okay. Guarantee it. We got a couple of questions from Connie and another one from Fernanda. And um, these questions are a little bit more personal. And uh, while they're great questions, and I know that yes. you wanted to answer them, yes. you've, you've mentioned that you want to leave these specifically for yes. Penthouse. Yes, and so uh, Carol asked a question. Could we just pick the subject matter? Connie? Connie, uh, sorry. Connie, uh, she's talking about uh, feeling, uh, she's, she's tuning into other people's feelings, and she can feel it in her chest. Oftentimes, yes. it's very fatiguing, and she's asking what's yes. going on. Okay, so I'll speak quickly to that, uh, okay. but I will speak more in depth about that on the Penthouse perspective. Uh, that essentially means that you're leaking. And I'm an adept empath and I can feel people all over the world. Uh, once I read somebody and I essentially know their channel, anytime I tune into them, I can feel them. I also have highly telepathic relationships with some people. And right now I'm actually in a telepathic relationship and I'm feeling a number of things coming through from this person. Having self-awareness, recognizing where you stop and they begin is very, very helpful. Okay. 
Um, letting go of the idea that says you need to help or fix anybody else will also start to create some energetic boundaries. Okay. Setting an intention that only the light may enter is also another boundary. Okay. So I will speak to this question in greater depth, but essentially that I hope will give you a little bit of a bandaid right now to help you to recognize <clears throat> that we don't have to pick up other people's energy. Some, sometimes by nature of the relationship, we will pick it up, but we can also diffuse it, understand it and integrate it. If it's overwhelming you, then there's leaks in your energy field. Okay. And uh, Fernanda has a question as well, but, um, yeah, this one's Fernanda's more question experience. goes into, um, into some very in-depth personal experiences. And in these kinds of situations, I, I really do prefer, if possible, to talk about these things one-on-one -on -one with someone in a personal session by the nature of the experience. And Fernanda, I really commend you and your courage to talk about this. And your question is an indication that you are very definitely ready to go beyond it. It is something that I will um, speak about in the penthouse perspective in much greater depth, and it will probably be a show in itself. Mm. So we are bookmarking it, please know that okay on the youtube sorry you have something else no, no. uh rami uh on the youtube chat here she, um said they keep falling asleep during meditation how do i stop this from happening well you might not at first <laughs> okay <laughs> you might need to don't rest. worry <laughs> about it it's okay if you fall asleep in meditation and it's really bothering you then you might want to pick another time to meditate okay i meditate morning and night before i even get my head out of bed uh, I started to practice that because I was the mother of two young children. I was a single mom and I knew that if I didn't get it in, you know, once I hit my world and I hit the ground running, it wasn't going to happen. So meditation can put us to sleep if we're especially doing it at the end of a very busy day. Okay. And Rami, you have your hands full. You've got a busy life. So do try to find a time when you're less likely to fall asleep, but don't see it as near as, you know, as a terrible thing if you do fall asleep. Because essentially, once the body relaxes, the physical container has been made neutral through going into the unconscious sleep state, we automatically align with spirit anyway. So meditation is essentially doing that consciously. And with a little bit of practice, it'll get easier and easier. Okay finding the right time of day. Okay. These are tips. I want to. Lynette wants to give away another copy of the book. This is how many we at now? Is it four copies? Yep. Four yep. copies. So this one, drum roll, <laughs> Pamela McKinney, hmm. Pamela McKinney. Congratulations. Sally will be sending you a free copy of Mathematical. And if you didn't win and you want to win, you can go to mathematical.com, put your name in the at the bottom there of the website you can get a, a chance to win and we will keep giving away copies of mathematical for the remainder of the podcasts here that we're doing uh on reflections on the journey and i'm probably going to take a few of them forward with me for the penthouse perspective oh there you too. go <laughs> yeah. so your chances just keep on going okay we uh, are keeping all the names in one big hat <laughs> Uh, so we have some some breakthroughs and some kind words from some people that I wanted to share because I thought they were really great. Uh, Karen says, uh, I'm, I'm watching your videos with Graham on YouTube, and the two of you are amazing together. I could listen to both of you all night long. My life has not been easy, and listening to Mathematical and watching your videos is really helping me to be more self-aware and view my life to date in a different way. I understand some of the bad choices I've made in my life now, and I'm spending time reflecting on those choices and determining how to better to do, to do better going forward. Thank you both for your wisdom and insight. Thank you so much for that feedback. The only thing that I'd like to say is that you haven't made any bad choices. It's through making choices that we may not want to repeat that we actually learn and grow. So please let go of polarizing language like good and bad and right and wrong. I don't know about anybody else but myself, some of the decisions that I could have considered bad or wrong were actually great opportunities for me. I have, I have two marriages that have ended. Was it bad or wrong? Did I make the wrong choice? Absolutely not. Was it bad or wrong that they ended? Absolutely not. In fact, I would marry both of those men again, knowing that it was going to end to learn what I've learned. Okay, so no polarizing language that will create resistance, good, bad, right, wrong, success, failure. They don't actually exist. Those are false belief systems that will lead to separation. Okay, I would say that you are really getting it and recognizing that you're in control of the decisions that you make. And if you didn't like the, the decision that you made, if you didn't like the outcome, change the decision. That's it. 
There's no punishment. There's no hell. Hell is life on earth that we create for ourselves by being out of alignment. Okay. Valdera says, hello, Lynette and Graham. I can, I am, I can only be grateful for this wonderful book. I want to say that I am really changing some things in my life. After eight years out of the job market, I went back to work in a lingerie store. Uh -huh. I'm 57 years old and I work with very young people and this is doing me very well. I must say that my self-esteem has improved a lot. Thank you for helping me to see that I can be the captain of my boat. Fantastic. That's lovely. And who doesn't, what woman doesn't want to work in a lingerie store? One of my favorite places to go for sure. That's fun. Congratulations. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Connie shares with us uh, she that she has embarked on writing the last six days of her husband's life, March 21st to the 26th. Finally, after eight years of procrastination, I've done it, she says. I was afraid it would vanish if I wrote it. Thank you, Lynette, for sharing tender messages of validation. I know this story, this season will be with me always. I know this deep spiritual love will never die. Today, March 26, I will write of the most glorious story and as I was honored to watch the journey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You see, fear and challenges take many forms for all of us. For one lady, it was getting out of her comfort zone and going back to work. For another one, writing down the words. Don't hold expectations about what these may look like. Just be present in the moment and ready, as ready as you can be. And if you found it when a challenge came in a particular moment and you didn't find yourself ready or you didn't handle it the way that you'd like to, when that moment passes, run off, grab some more tools and be ready for the next moment because it will come back until you master it. It'll come back and get louder and bigger until we master it. Okay. So those are, those are my notes. The thing that I wanted to let everybody know is that the, the next chapter is all about the keys. So that we have mm -hmm. foundational keys, magic keys, and master keys. And those are about how to deal with traps, how yes. to how to basically the secrets. I think that was our fun. That was the part we enjoyed the most. The keys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when we were recording the book, that was that to me, that's the juicy bits. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's where all the good chocolate is. Yeah. So um <laughs> so I, that's the next one. Yes, definitely. And um, do you want to draw another name? Another name? And I'd just like to see if there's any comments on there that we want to uh sure I can cycle back here. Um and Nancy says, thank you so much, uh, Lynette and Graham. God bless you both. Love listening to you always. Thank you. Um, Graham, <laughs> Rami says, Graham, how far are you on your journey uh, of life? It's ongoing. <laughs> <laughs> we never arrive. Yeah. <laughs> um, and as far as Mathemagical is concerned, editing the book, um, many of us have had a few chuckles watching Graham walking around, <laughs> reciting the book by heart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's, um, uh, yeah, when I was doing the notes for this, uh, for this episode of reflections on the journey, I was re-listening to the chapter and I could say before I could say what Lynette was going to say before she said it. Cause I've heard it so many times. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if she says, even if she says something in a certain way, parts of the book will play in my head. <laughs> yeah. But as far as I, I'd like to comment, um, watching, uh, Graham edit the book. It was really amazing how he embraced the process and he challenged fun. himself to grow. Yeah. So I would say Graham has done the journey. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, the, yeah. Ongoing. Yeah. Ongoing. But, yeah. yeah. So uh, I pulled the name Nancy Westberg. So Nancy, Nancy Westberg, congratulations. I don't know if Nancy's in the chat, but if you are, congratulations. Otherwise you'll be getting an email from Sally with your free copy. Wonderful. Of That's a magic book. I think we're coming to the end of another really great show. I love being here. I love doing this. I really, really do. I love the testimonials. I love the feedback. I love hearing that people are benefiting from this work. This is my life's work. I was born to do this and I don't want to do anything else. So when I'm seeing the results, thank you so much. You're validating me and you give me the inspiration to keep going on. When I hear about the stories and the changes and the things that people are overcoming, you have no idea how much you inspire me and spur me on. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Um, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed. And also, if you hit that little thumbs up, the like button, that also YouTube has an algorithm or something that makes oh. it. So once more people hit the like button, apparently YouTube uh, will then show that video to more people or something like that. So it helps. Yeah, Even right. if you like it, you know, just click that little button and it helps the channel out. So subscribe and, and click you. the like button. Thanks, yeah. guys. Okay, and we'll see you again. For foundational keys.
Foundational keys. Yes, is the next chapter. TBA. <laughs> what is it? TBA. Is it TBA? To be announced. To be in TB. Yeah. T yes. Yeah, TBA. <laughs> and if you do want to be put on the email list, please uh, welcome at mathematical.com and say, please put me on the email list. We are getting lots of feedback. So thank you. Okay. Great. Awesome, guys. See you next time. Bye bye.